This 11 minute presentation is about the modelling with algorithms strand of the draft MEI further math specification proposed for first teaching in September 2017. Algorithms are used widely in the modern world. Google uses an algorithm to rank search results so that you can see the relevant ones on the front page. Traffic lights use an algorithm to decide when to change. An algorithm is used to compress music files so they can be downloaded across the internet. A lift in a skyscraper follows an algorithm as it responds to competing calls from different floors. Studying algorithms is useful preparation for computer science, discrete mathematics, operational research and engineering. To study algorithms, it's necessary, of course, to start with simple examples. Network algorithms such as Dijkstra, Prims and Kruskal and sorting algorithms are the traditional starting points and we have kept these. In designing this course, we wanted the early parts of it to look familiar to teachers of decision one. But the unit is part of further maths. So we also wanted it to delve into more sophisticated ideas. In particular, we wanted students to engage with the idea that to use a network algorithm on a realistic size problem requires the use of technology. Students won't have a computer in the exam, but they will be expected to interpret the output from software. Ideally, they'll have used the software in class. This unit is certainly not just about studying algorithms. It's about modeling with algorithms. The MEI decision units have always had an emphasis on modeling. So we've been able to take the new modeling requirements in our stride. Modeling with algorithms is a minor option one-sixth of an A-level in further maths. It starts in a very accessible way and can be taught alongside AS maths. There's an AS unit with the same content, which is examined at AS standard and counts for one-third of AS further maths. The specification for this unit is written in three sections. But it makes more sense to think of the unit as a story or a journey. The next few slides show this and bring out the way everything ties together. Think about two problems. A sat-nav is required to find the shortest route from one town to another. A biologist wants to know how long an infectious disease that affects trees will take to spread through a forest. These seem quite different problems, but both of them can be modelled with a network and both of them are about finding a shortest path through the network. Immediately, you can appreciate the power of this modelling approach, reducing very different problems to the same bit of mathematics. There's an algorithm for finding a shortest path through a network, Dijkstra, and it can be applied to problems like these. But how do we know that algorithms like these always give the best answer? And how long will it take to apply the algorithm? When you first learn about algorithms like Dijkstra, you practice on simple problems so that you understand how it works. But as soon as the problem has a realistic size, then you need to use a computer. It turns out that several different kinds of network problems can all be written as a linear programming problem or an LP. This is another very powerful idea. And there are software packages that solve linear programming problems. So now we can solve realistic size network problems using technology. Some of these software packages use the simplex method. So the unit includes learning how simplex works. Further math students should understand what the software is doing. The topics that will be new to some teachers are reformulating a network problem as a linear programming problem and 
using technology to solve LPs. Here's an example which is trivial in size but shows how it works. This is just an outline explanation. The problem is to find the shortest path from A to D. Of course, you can use Dijkstra, or you can write it as an LP so that you can use an LP solver package. The linear program, the LP, is on the right. Each variable, for example, AB or BD, is constrained to take the values one or zero. AB takes the value one if the arc from A to B is used in the path. If the arc from A to B is not used, then the variable AB is zero. Look at the example in red. Without going into great detail, the expression that you try to minimize is the length of a route through the network. Try the example in red and you should get six. The first condition says that the path must include just one of AB or AC. The last condition says that the path must include just one of BD or CD. They work for our example. The second condition says that if a path arrives at B, then it must leave B. That works for our example. The path goes into B once and comes out of B once. The third condition says the same thing for C. Our path doesn't go through C. All those variables are zero. That's just a quick explanation. If you were wanting to understand this properly, you might pause the video and see how this works for other paths through the network. You can find free LP solvers online, or you can use a solver in Excel to input the LP on the right. The solver will produce an answer like the one at the bottom of this slide. Obviously, this needs to be interpreted. The shortest path is from A to B to C to D, which has length five. What do exam questions look like? Plenty of them look familiar. Sample exam papers are available. Here's an excerpt from a question from the middle of the AS paper. There are some more straightforward questions than this on the paper and some more challenging ones later. This question has some modeling and some problem solving elements to it. Candidates have to realize that to save the maximum amount of money, they have to leave a minimum spanning tree. They can then choose whether to use prims or cruskles, or they could keep the bridge EF and work on the two remaining pieces separately. Candidates choose their approach and they explain what they are doing. There's another part of the question. It's proposed to join DH with a two kilometer cable. The costs are given and remove any cables which are now unnecessary. How many months will it take to break even? This is a question on a familiar topic, but it does have more of a further maths feel about it. This is how the exams work. There's one A-level paper and one AS paper on the same content. They can be co-taught in year 12. 
We believe this is an exciting, coherent and relevant course. We are aware that teachers will need considerable support when starting to teach it, and, and you can rely on MEI to provide that support. There will be a range of resources for teaching and learning, as well as face-to-face -face and online CPD. This will all be available in good time to help you prepare for September 2017. Our resources will include short YouTube videos on how to use Excel and the freely available online software. Do get in touch if you have any questions. We'd be delighted to help.